a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Remembrance Day Remembrance Day is a memorial day observed in Commonwealth of Nations member states since the end of the First World War to remember the members of their armed forces who have died in the line of duty. Following a tradition inaugurated by King George V in 1919, the day is also marked by war remembrances in many non-Commonwealth countries. Remembrance Day is observed on the 11th of November in most countries to recall the end of hostilities of World War I on that date in 1918. Hostilities formally ended, at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, in accordance with the armistice signed by representatives of Germany and the Entente between 5.12 and 5.20 that morning. The First World War officially ended with the signing of the Treaty of Versailles on 28 June 1919. The memorial evolved out of Armistice Day, which continues to be marked on the same date. The initial Armistice Day was observed at Buckingham Palace, commencing with King George V hosting a banquet in honor of the President of the French Republic during the evening hours of 10 November 1919. The first official Armistice Day was subsequently held on the grounds of Buckingham Palace the following morning. The Red Remembrance Poppy has become a familiar emblem of Remembrance Day due to the poem, In Flanders Fields, written by Canadian physician Lieutenant Colonel John McRae. After reading the poem, Moyna Michael, a professor at the University of Georgia, wrote the poem, We Shall Keep the Faith, and swore to wear a red poppy on the anniversary. The custom spread to Europe and the countries of the British Empire and Commonwealth within three years. Madame Annie Guerin tirelessly promoted the practice in Europe and the British Empire. In the UK Major George Howson fostered the cause with the support of General Haig. Poppies were worn for the first time at the 1921 anniversary ceremony. At first real poppies were worn. These poppies bloomed across some of the worst battlefields of Flanders in World War I. Their brilliant red color became a symbol for the blood spilled in the war. Observance in the Commonwealth The common British, Canadian, South African, and Anzac tradition includes a one or two minute silence at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, as that marks the time when the armistice became effective. The service of remembrance in many Commonwealth countries generally includes the sounding of the last post, followed by the period of silence, followed by the sounding of reveille, or sometimes just the rouse, and finished by a recitation of the Ode of Remembrance. The Flowers of the Forest, O Valiant Hearts, I Vow to Thee, My Country, and Jerusalem, are often played during the service. Services also include wreaths laid to honor the fallen, a blessing, and national anthems. The central ritual at cenotaphs throughout the Commonwealth is a stylized night vigil. The last post was the common bugle call at the close of the military day, and the rouse was the first call of the morning. For military purposes, the traditional night vigil over the slain was not just to ensure they were indeed dead and not unconscious or in a coma but also to guard them from being mutilated or despoiled by the enemy, or dragged off by scavengers. This makes the ritual more than just an act of remembrance, but also a pledge to guard the honor of war dead. The act is enhanced by the use of dedicated cenotaphs and the laying of wreaths, the traditional means of signaling high honors in ancient Greece and Rome. Australia In Australia, Remembrance Day is always observed on the 11th of November, regardless of the day of the week, and is not a public holiday. It is a time when people can pay their respects to the substantial number of soldiers who died in battle. Some institutions observe two minutes silence at 11 a.m. through a program named Read to Remember. Children read the Pledge of Remembrance by Rupert McCall and teachers deliver specially developed resources to help children understand the significance of the day and the resilience of those who have fought for their country and call on children to also be resilient when facing difficult times. Services are held at 11 a.m. at war memorials and schools in suburbs and cities across the country, at which the last post is sounded by a bugler and a one-minute silence is observed. In recent decades, Remembrance Day has been largely eclipsed as the National Day of War commemoration by Anzac Day, which is a public holiday in all states. When Remembrance Day falls on a normal working day in Melbourne, 
and other major cities, buglers from the Australian Defence Force often play the last post at major street corners in the CBD. While this occurs, the majority of passers-by stop and observe a moment of silence while waiting for the bugler to finish the recital. Barbados In Barbados, Remembrance Day is not a public holiday. It is recognized as the 11th of November, but the parade and ceremonial events are carried out on Remembrance Sunday. The day is celebrated to recognize the Barbadian soldiers who died fighting in the First and Second World Wars. The parade is held at National Heroes Square, where an interdenominational service is held. The Governor General and Barbadian Prime Minister are among those who attend, along with other government dignitaries and the heads of the police and military forces. During the main ceremony a gun salute, wreaths, and prayers are also performed at the War Memorial Cenotaph at the heart of Heroes Square in Bridgetown. Bermuda In Bermuda, which sent the first colonial volunteer unit to the Western Front in 1915, and which had more people per capita in uniform during the Second World War than any other part of the empire, Remembrance Day is still an important holiday. The parade in Hamilton had historically been a large and colourful one, as contingents from the Royal Navy, British Regular Army, and Territorial Army units of the Bermuda Garrison, the Canadian Forces, the US Army, Air Force, and Navy, and various cadet corps and other services all at one time or another marched with the veterans. Since the closing of British, Canadian, and American bases in 1995, the parade has barely grown smaller. In addition to the ceremony held in the city of Hamilton on Remembrance Day itself, marching to the Cenotaph, where wreaths are laid and orations made, the Royal Navy and the Bermuda Sea Cadet Corps held a parade the same day at the memorial in Hamilton, and a smaller military parade is also held in Street. George is on the nearest Sunday to Remembrance Day. Canada In Canada, Remembrance Day is a statutory holiday in all three territories and in six of the ten provinces. From 1921 to 1930, the Armistice Day Act provided that Thanksgiving would be observed on Armistice Day, which was fixed by statute on the Monday of the week in which the 11th of November fell. In 1931, the federal parliament adopted an act to amend the Armistice Day Act, providing that the day should be observed on the 11th of November, and that the day should be known as Remembrance Day. A bill intended to make Remembrance Day a federal statutory holiday was tabled in the House of Commons during the 41st Parliament, but died on the order paper when Parliament was dissolved for a federal election. The Federal Department of Veterans Affairs Canada states that the date is of remembrance for the men and women who have served and continue to serve our country during times of war, conflict and peace, particularly the First and Second World Wars, the Korean War and all conflicts since then in which members of the Canadian Armed Forces have participated. The department runs a program called Canada Remembers with the mission of helping young and new Canadians, most of whom have never known war, come to understand and appreciate what those who have served Canada in times of war, armed conflict and peace stand for and what they have sacrificed for their country. The official national ceremonies are held at the National War Memorial in Ottawa. These are presided over by the Governor-General of Canada and attended by the Prime Minister, other dignitaries, the Silver Cross Mother, and public observers. Occasionally, a member of the Canadian royal family may also be present. Before the start of the event, four sentries and three sentinels are posted at the foot of the cenotaph. The commemoration then typically begin with the tolling of the Carillion in the Peace Tower, during which current members of the armed forces arrive at Confederation Square followed by the Ottawa Diplomatic Corps. Ministers of the Crown, special guests, the Royal Canadian Legion, the Royal Party, and the Viceregal Party. The arrival of the Governor-General is announced by a trumpeter sounding the alert, whereupon the Viceroy is met by the Dominion President of the RCL and escorted to a dais to receive the Viceregal salute, after which the national anthem, O Canada, is played. The moment of remembrance begins with the bugling of last post, immediately before 11 a.m., at which time the gun salute fires and the bells of the Peace Tower toll the hour. Another gun salute signals the end of the two minutes of silence, and cues the playing of a lament, 
the bugling of the rouse, and the reading of the act of remembrance. A fly-past of Royal Canadian Air Force craft then occurs at the start of a 21-gun salute, upon the completion of which a choir sings, in Flanders Fields. The various parties then lay their wreaths at the base of the memorial. One wreath is set by the Silver Cross Mother on behalf of all mothers whose children died in conflicts in which Canada participated. The Vice Regal and or Royal Group return to the dais to receive the playing of the Canadian Royal Anthem, God Save the Queen, prior to the assembled armed forces personnel and veterans performing a march past in front of the Viceroy and any royal guest, bringing about the end of the official ceremonies. A tradition of paying more personal tribute has emerged since erection of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier at the War Memorial in 2000. After the official ceremony the general public place their poppies atop the tomb. Similar ceremonies take place in provincial capitals across the country, officiated by the relevant lieutenant governor, as well as in other cities, towns, and even hotels or corporate headquarters. Schools will usually hold special assemblies for the first half of the day, or on the school day prior, with various presentations concerning the remembrance of the war dead. The largest indoor ceremony in Canada is usually held in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, with over 9,000 gathering in Credit Union Centre in 2010. The ceremony participants include veterans, current members of the Canadian Forces, and Sea, Army, and Air Cadet units. In 1994, National Aboriginal Veterans Day was inaugurated to recognize the contribution of Aboriginal soldiers. In 2001, Merchant Navy Remembrance Day was created by the Canadian Parliament, designating the 3rd of September as a day to recognize the contributions and sacrifice of Canadian merchant mariners. India In India, the day is usually marked by tributes and ceremonies in army cantonments. There are memorial services in some churches such as St. Mark's Cathedral and St. John's Church in Bangalore, at Kahima, and Impal in the remote hillsides of northeast India. Services of remembrance supported by the Indian Army are observed at Kahima and Impal War Cemeteries. The day is also marked at the Delhi War Cemetery. In other places in India this event is not observed. In 2013, Prince Charles and Camilla, Duchess of Cornwall, marked the day in Mumbai's St. John the Evangelist Church. Kenya In Kenya, the Kenya Armed Forces Old Comrades Association was established in Kenya immediately in 1945 to cater for the welfare of the ex-servicemen of the First and the Second World Wars. The Kafoka and Kenyan government recognize Remembrance Day. New Zealand New Zealand's National Day of Remembrance is Anzac Day, the 25th of April. Poppy Day usually occurs on the Friday before Anzac Day. The reason for New Zealand having their remembrance on Anzac Day happened in 1921. The paper poppies for Armistice that year arrived by ship too late for the 11th of November 1921, so an RSA branch distributed them at the next commemoration date and that date stuck as the new poppy day in New Zealand. Armistice Day was observed in New Zealand between the World Wars, although it was always secondary to Anzac Day. As in other countries, New Zealand's Armistice Day was converted to Remembrance Day after World War II, but this was not a success. By the mid-1950s the day was virtually ignored, even by churches and veterans' organizations. Since the unknown warrior being returned to New Zealand for Armistice Day 2004, more ceremonies are now being held in New Zealand on Armistice Day and more churches are now observing Remembrance Sunday. St. Lucia like Barbados, St. Lucia does not recognize Remembrance Day as a public holiday. Instead, ceremonial events such as parades and other activities are held on Remembrance Sunday. The parade is held at the Central Square, namely the Derek Walcott Square, where the Cenotaph is located. There, members of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force and other uniformed groups such as the St. Lucia Cadet Corps pay tribute through commemoration of Street, Lucian men and women who fought in the war. South Africa In South Africa, Remembrance Day is not a public holiday. Commemoration ceremonies are usually held on the nearest Sunday, at which the last post is played by a bugler followed by the observation of a two-minute silence. 
Ceremonies to mark the event in South Africa are held at the Cenotaph in Cape Town, and in Pretoria at the Vortreka Monument Cenotaph, and the War Memorial at the Union Buildings. Many high schools hold Remembrance Day services to honor the past pupils who died in the two world wars and the border war. In addition, the South African Legion of Military Veterans holds a street collection on the nearest Saturday to gather funds to assist in welfare work among military veterans. Armistice Day Wreath laying ceremonies, usually organized by local branches of the Royal British Legion, are observed on Armistice Day at most war memorials across the UK at 11 a.m. on the 11th of November, with two minutes of silence observed. A custom which had lapsed before a campaign for its revival began in the 1990s. Many employers and businesses invite their staff and customers to observe the two minutes silence at 11 a.m. The beginning and end of the two minutes silence is often marked in large towns and cities by the firing of ceremonial cannon. The first two-minute silence in London was reported in the Manchester Guardian on 12 November 1919. The first stroke of 11 produced a magical effect. The tram cars glided into stillness, motors ceased to cough and fume, and stopped dead, and the mighty limbed dray horses hunched back upon their loads and stopped also, seeming to do it of their own volition. Someone took off his hat, and with a nervous hesitancy the rest of the men bowed their heads also. Here and there an old soldier could be detected slipping unconsciously into the posture of attention. An elderly woman, not far away, wiped her eyes, and the man beside her looked white and stern. Everyone stood very still. The hush deepened. It had spread over the whole city and become so pronounced as to impress one with a sense of audibility. It was a silence which was almost pain, and the spirit of memory brooded over it all. Remembrance Sunday in the United Kingdom, the main observance is Remembrance Sunday, held on the Sunday nearest to the 11th of November. Typically, poppy wreaths are laid by representatives of the Crown, the armed forces, and local civic leaders, as well as by local organizations including ex-servicemen organizations, cadet forces, the Scouts, Guides, Boys Brigade, St. John Ambulance and the Salvation Army. The start and end of the silence is often also marked by the firing of an artillery piece. A minute's or two minutes silence is also frequently incorporated into church services. The main national commemoration is held at Whitehall, in central London, for dignitaries, the public, and ceremonial detachments from the armed forces and civilian uniformed services such as the Merchant Navy, and Her Majesty's Coast Guard. Members of the British royal family walk through the Foreign and Commonwealth Office towards the Cenotaph, assembling to the right of the monument to wait for Big Ben to strike 11 a.m. And for the King's Troop, Royal Horse Artillery at Horse Guards Parade, to fire the cannon marking the commencement of the two minutes of silence. Following this, last post, is sounded by the buglers of the Royal Marines. The rouse, is then sounded by the trumpeters of the Royal Air Force, after which wreaths are laid by the Queen and senior members of the royal family attending in military uniform and then, to Beethoven's funeral march, by attendees in the following order, the Prime Minister, the leaders of the major political parties from all parts of the United Kingdom, Commonwealth High Commissioners to London, on behalf of their respective nations, the Foreign Secretary, on behalf of the British Dependencies, the First Sea Lord, the Chief of the General Staff, the Chief of the Air Staff, representatives of the Merchant Navy, and fishing fleets and the Merchant Air Service. Other members of the Royal Family usually watch the service from the balcony of the Foreign Office. The service is generally conducted by the Bishop of London, with a choir from the Chapel's Royal, in the presence of representatives of all major faiths in the United Kingdom. Before the marching commences, the members of the Royal Family, and public sing the national anthem before the royal delegation lead out after the main service. Members of the reserve forces and cadet organizations join in with the marching, alongside volunteers from St. John Ambulance, paramedics from the London Ambulance Service, and conflict veterans from World War II, Korea, the Falklands, the Persian Gulf, Kosovo, Bosnia, Northern Ireland, Iraq, other past conflicts and the ongoing conflict in Afghanistan. The last three then-known British resident veterans of World War I, Bill Stone, 
Henry Allingham, and Harry Batch, attended the 2008 ceremony, but all died in 2009. After the service, there is a parade of veterans, who also lay wreaths at the foot of the cenotaph as they pass, and a salute is taken by a member of the royal family at Horse Guards Parade. In 2014 the Royal Mint issued a colour-printed Alderney £5 coin, designed by engraver Laura Clancy, to commemorate Remembrance Day. Also in 2014, to commemorate the outbreak of World War I a massive display of 888,246 ceramic poppies was installed in the moat of the Tower of London, each poppy representing a British Empire fatality. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?